guess what? It is finally spring here in New England. The snow is all melted. Birds are occasionally singing in the bushes. It's almost warm and things are growing out of the ground. They're green and they're miraculous at this point. I feel like winter took a long time. So here is what you'll need to make a chickadee. You need your felting pad and your felting needle, mill waste or whatever you like to put inside your felting, and some wool roving in gray, white, black, sort of a light tan. And I also use a little bit of dark brown later. You start out with your mill waste in a fat teardrop shape. I like to roll it up before I start so there's not quite so much poking. You felt it all around to make it nice and tight and give yourself a good base to work off of. When you're finished with the body, I'm gonna make a dome shape for the head, kind of a half round. Felt that all together. Use our white to make the tummy of the bird. It comes up about to the midline on the sides. You can use plenty of thin layers to keep it all smooth. You can add more layers to make it actually white. Sometimes it takes a few. This is also a good time to make the bird fatter if you didn't make it quite chubby enough at the beginning. Also use the white around the back of the neck to make the cheeks, which will stay white, and the back of the head stays a little bit white. And you grab your tan, put it along the sides where the wings are gonna be. The wings will cover up some of it, but it kind of peeks out from underneath them. And try to keep both sides even as far as color and, you know, fatness. Now with the gray, we start on the back, kind of feeling everything that's mill waste, always touch it up later if something looks a little uneven. You also use the gray to make the wings and the tail. I use the black and the white on there also for a little dimension and to make it look a lot more like a bird. Now I felt around all the edges to neaten up the sides. Careful of your fingers. Attach the tail where you think it ought to go. Try to keep it nice and straight. Now you do the same thing for the wings, felt around the edge so they're kind of sharper, less fuzzy. Be careful while you're felting them on to try to make sure that none of them are too high or too low. Keep it symmetrical. And once you're happy with where they are, felt them down, because really they're not going to stick out all that much. You take your black, make a little triangle for the chin, and it comes to a point right where the beak will be sure it's nice and black and then finally you can use your black to make the actual black cap of the black cap chickadee it ends up being kind of a teardrop shape a little pointier in the back and a little bit less pointy in the front and once again with the black make a tiny cone shape for the beak felt that down now I take tiny dots of white to put them in the eyes for shine because really chickadees would have black eyes but you wouldn't see that and now Using your black, once more, make teeny little oblong feet. And they can even hang down a little bit so they look like they're curling around. All right, so here we're basically gonna start with a round ball for the inside and cover it in tan. You could add white on the tummy if you want to. I didn't bother to do that on this one. Using gray, you cover the back, it ends up being like a cape. You can make white triangles to make a point, and then the little triangle of black underneath, and the black cap. Add the beak, brown or white eyes, and gray wings. Now I thought he needed something, so I added some black eyebrows. Now he looks like a serious chickadee.